NVIDIA made some massive announcements about what they're doing to ensure that 2024 is certainly the year of the robot. As we know, NVIDIA are all in on the world of AI, developing the software and the hardware, the chips necessary to power those AI algorithms. They had a massive announcement about what they're doing in the world of AI and robots specifically humanoid robots. NVIDIA introduced their Project Groot, a general purpose foundation model for humanoid robot learning. Project Groot basically stands for Generalist Robot Zero Zero Technology. Seems like they may have just used those terms to come up with the word Groot because there seems to be a bit of a Marvel theme going on through this and we'll come to that later. Anyway, NVIDIA introduced a foundation model, as I say, designed to enable humanoid robots like the ones I've been showcasing on this channel, humanoid robots to learn from multimodal instructions and past interactions, learning from human actions, learning from virtual actions, video data and stuff like that, learning how humans interact in the world. Basically, this model allows robots to understand and execute actions based on a variety of inputs, significantly enhancing their adaptability and functionality in real world scenarios. Basically, you need your robot to understand what you're asking it in natural language, hence the need for an, a large language model in an LLM, and then it needs to be able to know how to execute the necessary action to respond to your request or your demand or your command, etc. And therefore, it needs to draw on loads and loads of data about how people move, what action to use in order to interact with the physical world accordingly. So basically, the way to look at it is that Project Groot is a standardized operating system for the training of humanoid robots. Think like, you know, Windows is the operating system for PCs. And then it was iOS and Android being the standardized operating systems for mobile phones. Well, NVIDIA want to kind of empower the robot industry by creating a standardized operating system for the training of robots. But it's much more than software, of course. It's a very simplified way of putting it. It's a foundation model. NVIDIA wants to be that de facto operating system for humanoid robot training. As I said, that's a real simplification. Project Groot is much more than a simple operating system because it incorporates both software developed by NVIDIA and the hardware necessary, the microchips, the chips necessary to power the needs of AI, which, you know, requires powerful chips and then incorporates them all into a seamless workflow to basically offer an off the shelf solution of hardware, software and integration for robot companies out there. I mean, nine of the biggest robot companies were represented on the stage as part of this presentation. You had One X Technologies, Agility Robots, Aptronic, Boston Dynamics, Bigger AI, Fourier Intelligence, Sanctuary AI, which I featured on this channel before, Unitree Robotics and Xpeng Robotics, and even the Disney robots from their Disney theme parks. I mean, it was quite an impressive display. I guess conspicuous by its absence was the Tesla robot, Optimus Prime. So that's interesting because obviously Tesla seems to be going down their own route. But how does it all work? You know, how is it going to empower the robots? So basically it breaks down into kind of different areas. You've got your multimodal instruction processing. OK, so this is by hearing, you know, somebody give it natural language instructions by observing um, in the same way that we see large language models work now, you know, you can feed in an image and it can interpret that image. You can you know, talk to large language models using natural language and all of that. So the robot training begins with a group model, which takes in multimodal instructions along with past interactions it's had as input. And this allows the robot to understand and process various types of commands and data. And then it needs it sort of to go into action. Yeah. So this is the action production based on that input it's received. 
the group model, this foundation model, then determines the next action that that robot should execute. OK, this involves making decisions on its movement, its task, interactions and on the instructions and the robots learning. So, as I said before, basically, you've got your large language model, which can understand and interpret in natural language or visually what is required. And then you need a kind of effectively a large action model in order to choose the right action. What is the next action? What is the predictive next action based on your AI algorithms that you need to take in order to execute the action that you've been given? And that's where the training comes in. It needs to train on loads and loads and loads of action data in order to know how to instinctively interact with the physical world based on the instruction it's been given. In the same way that large language models are trained on tons and tons and tons of data, a large action model, the way the robot moves or how it decides it's going to move, it needs to be trained on loads and loads of data. And when it comes to movement, what's the best data that we have? Human data, yeah, human movement that has been recorded on video. It's easy to capture and therefore it's easy to train the robot how to move like a human. So how does it learn all this? So it can learn it through human demonstration learning. A significant aspect of training involves the robot learning from a small number of human demonstrations, whether that's by feeding it video or by it watching a, a human demonstrating it or even by teleoperating it. So somebody operating the robot remotely, how to fold a T-shirt that we've seen or iron or crack an egg or make a turkey sandwich or something using teleoperations for somebody working the robot but as it works the robot the robot learns what it's doing and then remembers it and that goes into its sort of large action model as the nvidia's ceo jensen huang told cnbc recently his company was making these advancements into humanoid robots because the data used to train these models comes from people in the world of ai where writing software uses data or training examples we have the most examples of human moving around of just about any other data. As I said, whether it's folding t-shirts or making turkey sandwiches, as we've seen in other videos that I've done. Another way of the robot learning is through digital twins. So these are virtual versions of the robot created on a computer that can then simulate different movements and different environments before the physical robot goes into those actual real environments. And of course, with a digital twin, you can go through thousands of iterations of movements and operations and how to manipulate it, you know, whether it's its arms or its fingers, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of times on a virtual digital twin of the physical robot without the physical robot having to do it. But then the physical robots learn all that data, all that training from its virtual twin part of training using its digital twin nvidia highlighted its omniverse platform which is a comprehensive environment for creating sophisticated digital twins that allows for the simulation of real world physics materials and interactions within a virtual space providing a powerful tool for designing testing and optimizing various systems and processes then you've got omniverse cloud which is a platform that will be available on the cloud so that all this can operate in the cloud as well to make it accessible to a wider range of users and applications. So you don't need a super, super powerful kind of chip and machine or, you know, sort of computer where you're at. You can do it virtually via the cloud. Then you've got Isaac Lab, which is a robot learning application. This is used in conjunction with Omniverse Isaac Sim. And it provides a simulated environment for the robot to train in, as I said, to allow for the safe and efficient rehearsal of tasks and movements thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And then all of this needs to be brought together. And that uses Osmo Compute Orchestration to manage and scale the training process. And it allows you to scale it on a massive scale so that you can train these robots in a virtual world 
sort of Osmo, using Osmo Compute through thousands and thousands of different scenarios without using the physical robot. But then you've got to power all of this. How do you power the robot? What's going to power the robot? We've already seen NVIDIA introduce super powerful chips for companies who are working in the world of AI and large language models in order to kind of help power those models because you need powerful chips to do that. And it's the same with training robots and for robots. Robots need powerful chips in order to interpret and understand large language models and to interpret and use and interact using their large action models. And so NVIDIA have introduced the Jetson Thor robotic chips. This is the hardware foundation for robots in this training workflow. Uh, and again, Jetson Thor, Thor, again, another Marvel reference there. The chips are designed specifically for powering the next generation of AI powered robots. But these are robots that sort of think for themselves, as it were, using natural language. They're not robots that have been programmed for one specific task. This is all about general purpose robots. And so you basically have your humanoid robot and you could say, hey, make me a cup of coffee. Hey, go into that dangerous environment and, you know, access that uranium or, hey, fold that T-shirt. Whatever it is, a general purpose humanoid robot that has learned from human actions, whether via digital virtual twin or by simulating video data from a human or being taught how to do things, having been operated, teleoperated by a human being. All of this combines in one giant workflow that is Project Groot. And it basically, what NVIDIA have done here is presented a comprehensive approach to robot training, combining advanced models, stimulation environments, and specialized hardware to teach robots to perform tasks and emulate human movement effectively and they're making this software and hardware this whole foundation platform project Groot available to to all the companies developing humanoid type robots out there and as far as i'm concerned this is only going to accelerate the growth of humanoid robots in 2024 so over the next few years i think it's going to be very exciting in the world of humanoid robots. Let me know what you think about all of this and whether you saw the presentation, what did you think of it? Did you see the little Disney robots at the end and all of that? What do you think it means about robotics for 2024? Put it in the comments down below. And of course, don't forget to hit the likes because I like it, YouTube likes it, and it helps people like you find content like this. And if you're new to my uh, channel, then please, Hit that subscribe button, toggle that notification bell, and that way you'll know when I go live with videos just like this. Talking of videos just like this, why don't you check out the videos over here? These ones here. I think you'll like them. Yeah, you, you particularly. You'll love them. They're brilliant. Thanks for watching.